It's a Monday, which means it's time for Super Savvy Savings, where we delve into the world of making your money go that little bit further. Um, let's talk Super Savvy Savings. Helping to make a difference to your bank balance. Super Savvy Savings. Right, I am on a website at the moment, and it's just got the most beautiful bespoke furniture on it. And it's all come about, it's flip it and restore it, it's all come about by one local couple who gather furniture that maybe other people are throwing out or maybe it's uh, selling very cheaply on auction websites and then they restore it beautifully. Um, and the Flip It and Restore project is a bit of a side hustle for one couple and uh, let's talk to one of them now, Brenda Blanfi and her partner in Littlehampton. Uh, they've been doing this in addition to their day job. So Brenda, lovely to have you with us. Thank you for joining me this morning. Oh, hi, Sarah. Thank you for having me. How are you? you? Yeah, I'm very good. I'm loving it. I'm, I'm perusing your website and I'm very <laughs> impressed by what I see. Now, you normally work in banking. Yes, so that's right. So Stuart and I both have full-time jobs. I'm in banking and he's an electronics engineer. So this is sort of our weekend and some <laughs> evenings, as you say, side hustle. I, it's so beautiful what you do though so I'm looking here at one item yeah. it's out of stock so someone snapped this up this is a yes. faux bone inlay stencil hand painted vintage yes. chest of joy I mean that's beautiful surely you didn't do that yourself oh yeah um, but anyone can do it that's the, I think that's the the joy of it is that what we do anyone can do really if they have the even basic tools because that piece you're looking at it's been painted and then stenciling done over the top so it's pre pretty simple but a beautiful beautiful effect it's the kind of thing that if you went along to some posh top end store you'd pay a fortune for this because it's it's really unique and different and beautifully done so i suppose if people haven't got the skills that you have they can just come along and buy this recycled stuff from you because again it's a lot cheaper yeah. than it would be buying brand new yeah but it's also that um you can do it yourself as well. Yes, we do do it for people and we do bespoke pieces and we work with customers to sort of create pieces that they want. But if you've got a piece of furniture at home or you inherit a piece of furniture or you see a piece of furniture in a charity shop or a boot sale and you like the shape but maybe not the look of it, don't be deterred because you can create your own beautiful piece of furniture as well. As I'm looking at some of the things you've done, and, and it was, you know, pieces that probably you, you'd see and think, oh, no, that's really dated. And then you've done some yeah. really wonderful creative painting and sanding, and it's just something completely different. Yeah, so that's what we do. I mean, we, I think if you look on our um, website, you know, we take pieces of furniture that nobody else wants. We want to save the good quality pieces of vintage furniture that were made really well they're sturdy wood pieces of furniture and it's so sad to see them getting trashed in the dump because they don't look modern or they don't fit with today's aesthetic but all it takes is a coat of paint some stenciling decoupaging a number of creative things that you can do and it suddenly becomes beautiful again you also i i think i read that you <laughs> You managed to reupholster things, and I think for a lot, you know, I've I've seen old had old sofas that you love the sofa, but it really needs it reupholstering. The cost of getting that done will be extortionate, yeah. but that's something you say that you can actually do relatively cheaply and easily. Well, I wouldn't go so far as saying a sofa, a stool, absolutely. So stools to go with dressing tables. I have no upholstery background, but YouTube is your friend. It is a completely free resource, and there. And there is so many videos on there where you can learn different skills. So from watching YouTube videos, I've learned how to upholster stools. And, and anyone can. Where did this all start then? I, um, was it a hobby that then you thought, well, there's a business in this? Well, I think it, it also, I've watched YouTube videos on things like this for years. And then COVID happened lockdown happened and I think the original birth of it came about for mental health reasons. I've struggled with mental health and I needed a creative outlet and so we started with one piece of furniture 
and then we did another and another and another, and it's just grown from there. But at the same time, we found that we were taking these pieces of furniture that no one else wanted. Some we found on the side of the road that have just been left there. Um, I say eBay, Gumtree, Facebook marketplaces, pieces that people were getting rid of. And we could take and create these beautiful pieces of furniture that other people wanted. So it was, yeah, reducing waste, but also creating beautiful things. I, I'm really enjoying looking at your website because I, I love some of what you've done. And I'm looking at the moment at a 1960s walnut cocktail bar. And you've done something quite spectacular with that. Just to, It's out of stock, so clearly someone snapped this up. Yes. But just talk us through the, what this was and how you made it, what, what it became. Is that the one with the um, the sort of peacock paper? Yes, it's beautiful. Yes, yeah, yeah. So that actually, we bought that one on eBay. We went to pick it up, and we didn't realise at the time when we picked it up, but the legs, the original legs on it, were completely destroyed with woodworm. And the rest of it was in not the greatest condition. It obviously had a, a, a long life. Um, we were lucky enough that the woodworm hadn't gone beyond the legs, so we took those off, put some new legs on it, and then cleaned it up, painted it. I, I, when I saw it, I knew that I wanted something bright and bold for it. And I had the paper, and I got the paint to complement the colours in the paper. And so we created this very <laughs> eye-catching um, drinks cabinet, and Stuart um, went in and replaced the light. So when you pull the door, um, there was a very old vintage light with old wiring. So he replaced all the wiring so it was up to modern standard with a new LED bulb. And that was that piece created. Well, you just know that that is, some, that is going to be in someone's home now as their pride and joy. And yes. I bet you every time people come in, that will be the piece of furniture that they comment on. But nobody, I mean, I can't imagine being uh, seeing that old dated bit of furniture and sort of thinking, oh, pick up paper and I'll do this. You must be incredibly creative to come up with these ideas. Funnily enough, no. <laughs> so I didn't do any art at school. I was completely science of... I have a business degree. I, I have no art background. But you have, again, in resources like Pinterest, there's so much inspiration around. Pinterest, Instagram, you can find ideas wherever you look. And then it's, I think for most people, it's just sort of translating that idea into your own. So it doesn't have to be bold and bright to be beautiful, you know, you can pay, paint something black and replace the legs and replace the hardware. Such a simple change, and it is beautiful. And what's lovely about your website is you don't just sell your pieces. You've actually got a lot of advice there on, on and show us how you can actually do this, yes. how you can sand things down, some ideas. I mean, it's a great place to go. for If you're short of um, short money and you, you, you need to restore some furniture or you, you've got a piece that you need restoring, there are just so many ideas on your site. Yes. yes, and I think that's what we wanted is that we were going on this journey, but we wanted to teach other people as we went along. So... It wasn't just us learning. Other people could learn from what we did, what we learned, what mistakes we made, so that, yeah, you can do this at home yourself if you, if you want. Will you ever be giving up the day job and will this become a full-time thing? Because you're obviously passionate about it and, and you're obviously, you know, yeah. people really love what you do. Um, maybe one day in the future. I mean, I love my job. <laughs> I love having this as the hobby, well, more than a hobby, really, on the side. But I, I do love my job as well, so I think it would be very hard to leave that behind completely. I think we're sort of happy with the balance that we have at the moment. I think it's so lovely as well that so much of this, because you go, sometimes if you drop stuff off at the tip and you just see this stuff that's just hurled yeah. on there, and it is, it's beautiful, beautifully made, it's got a history to it. And it's just yes. just so wonderful to restore yes. that and for someone to, to love it once again. I think people are so put off by their immediate reaction to a piece. They look at a piece and think, oh, that looks really dated. You know, the varnish on that is really orange. But sand it down, give it a coat of paint. It can be completely modernised. There's 
I guess the culture of today where it's so disposable and, you know, you just buy for different, as the decor changes, you change what furniture you buy, but really you could just update what you've got to match current trends. Well, I have to say, I mean, what you've got, a lot of it probably not, not dissimilar in price to flat pack furniture, but worlds apart in terms of yeah. the quality and, and the unique nature of it. I mean, I did a costing just to, as an example. So if you went on somewhere like West Elm and you wanted to buy a chest of drawers, you're probably looking at about a thousand pounds. If you had a chest of drawers and you bought your own supplies, and I'm not talking anything fancy, I'm talking some sandpaper, some furniture paint, a paint roller kit, um, maybe some new drawer knobs and some furniture legs, you're looking at about 65 pounds to completely change the way a piece of furniture looks versus a thousand. Yeah, and you've also got something completely unique as well. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a real pleasure to talk to you. Really love Thank what you're you, doing. Sarah. Thank you, Brenda. It is. You must go on this website because it's just really inspirational to see what you can do with old furniture. And, and aside from sort of selling some pieces that they have restored themselves... They also give some really good tips on how you can restore things and some really good ideas. So flip it. If you put it in your favourite search engine, flip it and restore it. They're in Littlehampton. You will find all the details. Cool.